When I'm not feeling a strange mix of pride and shame for my Amazon recommended products list, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. You are the Bob Ross of guitar. Well, that explains why my parents always called me a happy accident. Sean, I think your nickname should be Fats. Anyway, Fats, my question, many of the chord-based riffs have a sense of finality to them instead of being circular and leading themselves into the next part of the song. How do I fix that? All right, so let's talk a little bit about riff writing. Now, when you say finality, that is kind of just the resolution of everything because riffs come from one of pl three places, right? When we're talking about the great riffs in rock history, the minor scale, where you end on the first note that you started or whatever, this is an F sharp minor, right? Crazy train in this tuning or whatever. You end on the F sharp where you started. If you don't end there, you have, you have to, right? Minor pentatonic, another great, you know, rock riff in history. You gotta end there. If it starts on an E, E minor. E, right? Or harmonic minor, a lot of great riffs come from the harmonic minor scale. Right, again, that's just all about that kind of finality to writing it. So, really, if it's not in minor pentatonic, minor scale, or minor harmonic, it's not really a riff. So just getting that out of the way, I think a great band to kind of study if you're thinking about how do I riff on chords and have these riffs kind of translate into the next chord is the band that played that last riff, Muse. I think they're one of the best riff writers when it comes to chord-based riff writing. I think a great example of that might be like... Uh, Time is running out, it's like... Uh, because every part of that riff follows a chord. Like the first one, if this is like an A, that's really just kind of like a, a vamp on an A and it's minor third. And then into kind of like a B minor, right? And then it's minor third that chromatic walk into the next chord, which is an E, is a great way to look at it. So again, without getting too far into like, you know, the parts of each riff that happen, I do think that like Muse is a great way to kind of like hear the, the chromatic walking of a riff and handing it off to the next chord. So, you know, again, when it comes to great rock riffs, I really think there are kind of two trains of thought, like that circular kind of one that just keeps going. Again, I think of Zeppelin as probably like the best band ever to make those like just like pounding riffs that aren't really chords, they're just kind of like phrases that just like repeat and go on and on forever. And I think the Muse is a great example of a band that uses more of a chord based riffing where it's riffing over a chord, handing it off to the next chord. So, you know, however you want to think about writing it, if you want to maybe change it up in a different way, think of the chords behind it if you want to do a chord based thing, and then how you can hand it off with single notes to the next chord, or if you want to do more of kind of like a circular repetitive bass riff thing, again, not the one's better than the other, think of maybe more of like a minor scale or a minor pentatonic scale or a minor harmonic scale, where you're just riffing in that scale, and then the chords can be happening behind that, but you don't really have to think of a chord based approach as much. Regarding that this is a nonsense video, for those who are interested and trapped with this clickbait, you can't play the blues if you don't feel it. It is in your face. You have to suffer to get the blues. If you don't, play something else accordingly to your mind state. Music hates cheaters. This imposer don't get it. He can't play at all, actually. Beginner technique, no feel of rhythm. He is ashamed to music by posting this crap for you, people. I played better after six months of learning guitar or sooner. Drop the blues when I stop suffering. Get to jazz, then. Now, back to blues. I played for over 30 years still learning. <laughs> this, this is my new favorite Salty Blues comment of all time. How you have to suffer to play the blues. And then this, this is also kind of like a salty call for help. <laughs> he suffered for so long. Had a happy moment in his life where he played jazz. And now he's back to playing the blues. That's, <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty deep right there. Pretty guitar, great demo. Hoping to see and hear lots of it in years to come. Unrelated question, what is guitar control? So if you don't know, guitar control is another YouTube channel 
guitar company that I kind of work for every now and then. I make a lot of videos on their channel and I try to make those videos different from the videos I have here. Like here's more like kind of techniques. Uh, there's a wide variety of stuff that I post on this channel. But there it's more kind of beginner focused stuff and there are more song lessons on the Guitar Control channel. Will you be doing any more song lessons? I just learned time is running out from the video you posted last year. So yeah, back to just song lessons. I don't really like posting a lot of song lessons on this channel. Again, it's more just about techniques, even though I did every now and then, like uh, if I do a cover and people like request enough ways on how to play it, I'm definitely happy to teach the way that I play songs, but I don't want to confuse people who are trying to learn a song and then they kind of see my, my weird getaway of playing that song. But again, that's what that guitar control channel is for. I teach a lot of songs over there. In fact, I just kind of uh, worked with them on a class that I'm doing where it's really kind of like beginner, intermediate class on just learning like the first 10 chords you ever need to know on guitar and then applying them into all song based stuff. So if you want more information on that class, uh, I will put a link in the description here. Again, you don't have to buy anything right now, but it is just more information. It's kind of like a pre-list type deal. It's kind of cool. It's definitely like a very intensive study on how you can play pretty much any song just learning 10 chords and using a capo. So if you're interested in that, please click the link or head on over to the GC channel because uh, I got a lot of cool stuff over there. If there's maybe something you're looking for on my channel that you haven't seen, definitely check that out too. Your hair grew back fast and this young lady actually sounds original towards the end, a very pretty song and great accompanist. Yeah, so the, uh, the great hair debacle of 2018 when the dude at the haircut place gave me like a, like a fade, like I was like a high school soccer player against my will. And it was one of those things where like, I was turned in the chair so I couldn't see what he was doing the entire time. And there was like a big reveal at the end. There shouldn't be a reveal at the end of a haircut. I don't know, whatever. I've been trying to roll with it. The good news is whenever my hair senses there's trouble, it, it comes to my defense. It's kind of like like an alarm system. So it's, it's coming back, but uh, there were some interesting times <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Quick question, do you have a favorite and least favorite guitar string? That's a great question. I consider myself more of an A string guy. I enjoy sliding into things on the A string. I enjoy rooting chords on the A string. I think the A string rooted chords sound the best. I find myself with the E string rooted chords having to skip the A string a lot. So, you know, especially kind of four string chord voicings, big fan of the A string. Uh, as far as my least favorite string, I could, I could do without the high E string. Again, you know, if it breaks, you can still have a perfectly good guitar set that you can play. Uh, <laughs> again, it, it has the least amount of room for air, probably, as far as, far as like going off the fretboard. <laughs> but yeah, favorite string, definitely the A string. I'm just team A string. What's your, what team are you on? Do bass only players rip on you for being a guitar player teaching bass? After learning guitar a bit, I started bass but stopped to focus on guitar. I felt phony trying to become a bassist. So I have been doing a few more bass lessons on the channel. I'll probably do another one this week because uh, I think it's a great complimentary instrument to have. I, for, strangely, have not been flamed by bass players that often yet. I'm sure, I'm sure a wave is coming. But I think a lot of it is I, as a guitar player, do respect that bass is different and the techniques that go into being like a good bass player are a lot different than being a guitar player, even though you can play a bass just like you play a guitar and it can get the job done. So I definitely, I hope that maybe my respect for the instrument kind of shines through. Now my respect for bass players in general is another story I don't want to get too deep into right now. But uh, yeah, I'm down, I'm down with the bass. Speaking of awesome fuzzy riffs, we're gonna link to listening homework this week to Ty Seagal. I think I'm saying his last name right. Could be wrong about that. Uh, definitely prolific songwriter. He's got some cool songs. Check this one out. Let me know what you think. And any questions or comments you have, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. And I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.